Welcome, Welcome to, Shade to Shade in the, in the City. City. I am your girl, Treese. It's now. And today we are getting into our review of episode 12 of Love and Marriage Huntsville. But thank you guys for tuning in. Please make sure that you hit that like button as you pop in. And you subscribe. And let's get into it. And let's get shady. Let's have a key. key. up with Kiki walking in you know where it was about to go down Mm -hmm. and Tisha was actually very cordial she told Kiki she looks pretty and you know they have kind of a nice little conversation and talk about how they haven't seen each other Kiki says yeah you know I tried to call you earlier this week you ain't never called me back and then she was like oh well I ain't see it but I ain't talking to you anyway she said but we not friends no way that's what I was looking for (laughs) and Kiki of course is acting confused why I don't understand what's wrong and lady were you not here for the past few weeks when we were talking about how you were spreading all my business with Mm -hmm. my ex-friend so of course Tisha gets upset and she gets up to walk away because she ain't here for the BS and she ain't trying to repeat herself Again and again. And, you know, uh, what's the girl name? Kiki. She's trying to explain to the table that um, her cousin and Marceau went and spread her business to. Actually, it was Tisha that explained it to the table. She was like, well, no, I was saying when- upset because of something from years ago. Yeah. And I was like, well, five or six years. Yeah. Yeah. She- yeah. Mm-hmm. And basically explains that, can, it, first of all, Shay Squad, I think I told y'all last review, can somebody please jump in the comments and let me know what the hell the see? We know we got Huntsville people that watch us. So come on, y'all. What Apparently, is- according to Marceau, this was not no personal business because everybody in Huntsville knew about it. So can y'all drop the T Huntsville viewers? What in the world is this big secret that Kiki does not, her personal business, that is causing all this friction. Please let us know. Because I'm tired of talking about it and not knowing what the hell we talking about. Yes, but she was right. Um, Tisha does address the entire table and lets her know, you know, Kiki is holding on some, to something from five, ten years ago that's already been discussed. And now she's trying to get back at her and her husband by teaming up with Mel. And she's like, no, I'm not trying to get back at you. What, why do you keep on bringing it up when I bring up this issue to make it seem like we even now? If that's not the case. And she basically true. says she don't operate like this. Okay. So then Kiki addresses the table and says about five or six years ago, she was invited to Mel's house for Christmas dinner. And she says before she got there, she heard a lot of things being discussed about her and her husband. Because Melody called her. You think that's what happened? Yeah, that's why she. That's why she said before I got there, she was. She thought me and Melody weren't friends, and Melody called her and told her what Marceau and uh, Tisha told. That's what, where the, the friction is coming in. So Kiki is even upset that uh, Tisha even told Marceau because apparently this was a conversation she had with just Tisha. Right. She was upset that she even shared it with her husband, which. Depend, I mean, she probably shouldn't have done anyway. But Marcel was the one that actually spilled the beans. So he's basically saying, like, blame me. It had nothing to do with Tisha. I'm the one that said it. I that baby daddy. Right. <laughs> and, That's my bad. You know? And, you know, but he feels like it was no personal business because everybody in Huntsville knew. This clearly gets Kiki highly upset. Kiki basically is is pissed off that he said that because she's like it's not about 
who in Huntsville knew is about the fact that you're around here telling my business. I don't give a damn about people in Huntsville. And I was like, well, Kiki, just so say. the peanut gallery at the table basically are asking, why is this reoccurring if it was already settled? Right. And Kiki says, well, every time it gets settled, Tisha brings it back up. And Tisha like, I ain't bringing it back up. I'll never bring it up. You all bring it up. This is true. Which, from what I've seen, that's true. true. Uh huh. And Tisha says that she has been nothing but a friend to her, even, you know, more than a cousin, she feels like. And she, she, she feels like, you know, this is, this is fucked up. This is, how can you do her this way? Yeah, it was kind of crazy. Um, and of course, you know, you really don't see nothing wrong with what she did, of course, because she wants to stick to her guns. And Wanda, Miss Wanda come over there and interrupts her. She's like, look, well, we're not, not going to be acting like we from the other side of the tracks. Damn, lady, you go to everybody's event and mess it up and you got the nerve to talk some shit right. about when somebody come to your event and want to talk something. And, and now you family. want people to be classy. At least now it's your family business. You come to other people's event with Crap that you found online, lady. Your daughter's I said, well, ain't this a pot calling the kettle back. Okay. Talking about we need to have a civilized conversation. Idea. Or she gonna shut this whole thing down. So um Marceau basically says the whole city of Huntsville knew. And their cousin Jennifer tells Marceau that you know you're the one causing friction because. Tisha is not going to come at you about it because you're her husband and she's not going to go against you. And Tisha's like, no, no, no. Mm -mm. It's your sister who's causing the friction Mm -hmm. and basically explains that uh, Kiki lied about having a conversation um, about about Marceau and his infidelity. And Kiki clears up the fact that she did not say that it was about um, him and his infidelity that they had a conversation about, about cheating infidelity spouse. and oh. um yeah that she didn't necessarily say that you know her husband cheated um this why this is no you basically that's what you told Mel you started this shit basically mm-hmm. and uh what's his name Amin uh, oh yeah which husband. is Kiki's husband yeah Kiki, Kiki's husband got into it. And he's like, look, you won't keep on talking to my wife like this. And yeah, we about to lay it all out on the table because Marceau got super duper hype when Kiki was talking about spreading it out on the table. And it made it seem real suspect because Tisha was cool, calm, and collective. She was like, yeah, go ahead. Say what you got to say. Go ahead. Say what you got to say. And, and Marceau, Marceau was, was like, like you you say you. one other word and I will one take everything. Word. I'm said. telling everything. Like, I wish she'd have been like, go ahead and tell me. Go on and tell it because we want to know. We want we want to know the tea on, on both sides. Okay. Marceau said he would burn that whole book down with yes, everybody in it. I yes, said Marceau. He, he, he would come out with that. Yeah. Like Jesus. Um so that's how does, you know she has some tea. Because he would not even let her remotely even think about saying anything. But my thing is if she did have tea. Tisha would know, right? I would think, but I don't know. And I think well, so probably after being, you know, jumped on the whole night by the rest of the family, he was just done. He was like, I can't deal with he was, especially with Bernard constantly in his damn ear. He was he was done and over with Bernard. He was I think he told he him was like, Bernard, if you don't get the hell out of my face. Yeah, he was done. But he did um say that it was brought to Tisha with malicious intent, you know. Kiki uh, Tisha, with malicious malicious intent. Basically, that, Mel that. gave her the bait. Mm-hmm. Mel told and her, it. yeah, and she, she took for it. it. And um, they talk about how basically Mel is using her and trying to hide her hand, as Marceau says, but she needs to do a better job. And of course, Kiki says she doesn't see it that way. And Tisha is just super emotional. She says she didn't expect to get emotional, but it hurts to know that her cousin would do something like this. And she was the one that came to her 
and told her that, you know, she she thinks that Mel is trying to destroy her family and for her to basically help her do it. Um, You know, she's feeling some type of way and rightfully so. And uh, yeah, I think that was basically it. I think after that, Miss Wanda basically kind of kicked everybody out. And No, she asked him, she said, well, on that note, is the food good? Yes, she did. She wanted to check and make sure the food was good. But maybe you might want to ask people that's outside of your family. Right. Um, so we see Miss Kimmy. She's going over to visit Destiny and wants to check up on her since she hasn't seen her since Jalen's house forming. Um, she basically, Destiny has a nice little setup, by the way. Kudos. And she actually, can I just say, she looked really cute. For like just lounging at home, the hairs was laid. Like it's in my notes. She looked really cute. Um, <laughs> so... No, um, she speaks to Destiny and asks her what's going on with her and Stormy and basically how did things go so left? Um, And Destiny says, I'm not really sure, but I do feel like there were mistakes on both, like on both parts. So she basically asked Kimmy, like, well, where did I go wrong? Kimmy lets her know, well, it might have been the sweetie. And Destiny is like, but hold on. And we we learned they cut to her confessional and she says, well, you know, Stormy has invited me and my father out to her home to go fishing. We talked before the Valentine's Day event. Um, you know, we talked and about her issues. The term, huh? And she's used the term sweetie with her before. And it was right. Never and she issue. says it's just a Southern thing. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I mean, I guess that would be like somebody in a quick, like in New Orleans, Louisiana, be like, baby, like, that's just how they talk. That's not, you know. I don't think so. No, it's not the same. No, well, see, you know how. That could be like, I call you the B word, but it'd be like, hey, now if I said it to somebody that don't really rock with me, they might want to punch me in my face. If you call me the B word, because we cool like that, that's different. But if you call me the B word in the middle of a heated discussion, (laughs) it's going to sound a little different. (laughs) Right. Because any other time it's Amy. Right. But now it's B. Right. Okay. That's true. Totally different. That's true. Um, so then she says that she basically does not know Stormy well enough to sit and try to figure out what the issue is. So I'm like, okay, Destiny, don't, don't block your blessings now. Okay. We all know Stormy got that bag. You better stop messing. Look, look, I'm sure you see it every time you go in Walmart and CVS. You better stop me- They're technically like the same industry a little bit, right? right? So it was like, why would you block your blessings? Because mm-hmm. I mean, she could definitely mentor you, right? So she also said that she's, you know, Kimmy basically asked her, like, "Well, do you think that it's from, you know, some of the other things that are going on in your life? Maybe you have some anger from that." And you know, she gives us the run through, you know, from getting married, having a baby, going through COVID, getting divorced. Getting um, she's like, "It's Opening a lot." And a I'm also mourning my friendship that was lost with Melody who was a super big support in my life. And, you know, the fact that she actually said, yes, that could have something to do with it, that I'm going through a lot right now. And maybe it's not all on her, all about how I felt. No, I love that she can take accountability and realize. I love that she was like, yeah, it could, that could definitely have something to do with it. Right. Um, but you know, destiny, I saw her on, uh, Carlos King's show, the nightcap. Um, a week or so ago, or I was watching the old rerun and baby, Destiny got her a man. So she might be feeling then a sexy chocolate man. So you seen him? Yes. You seen him? I didn't see his face face. She showed the side profile, but he got a nice body. Like he, I was like, okay. I mean, and she also, she also, and make sure if you have not already that you like, I told y'all, y'all go like and subscribe for this tea. So she also said, Oh, God, because it catches me on God. <laughs> it's funny. She also said that LeBarrett, the reason why, one of the many reasons why they got divorced is because there was another woman in their life. She said she was the third person in her marriage. When Carlos tried to delve deeper into what she meant, basically, she suggests that the other woman was his mom. I said, oh, meaning like he was, he wasn't going to, you know, a man is not going to choose 
you over his mama, and he clearly is a mama's boy. And apparently, but you knew that before you married him. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so that, apparently that would be like Bonzo would... and Shay. Shay was not entering the marriage until right. It was taken care of. So apparently, some of her, and you know, we don't know all the details of her divorce, but apparently, meddling mommy has something to do with that. So you know, y'all welcome. Anyway, so basically, Kimmy asked her you know, well, do you feel like this is just a speed bump in your relationship with Melody? Um, And basically, Destiny says that she feels like it may be more of a permanent situation. She doesn't think it's a speed bump. She thinks this is just where they are. And and it's unfortunate because, you know, they did go through a whole divorce together. Um, And even though maybe their situations were different, it was, you know, they still felt the same feelings. And, you know, she is kind of sad because it's kind of hard trying to navigate without her, you know, without her counterpart. I get it. So. And also she expressed that she was hurt. So um, they had a conversation and it was talking through text. And then she said, she gave her the space that, you know, she deserved. That she requested. Yeah. And I did, I, you, the good point. Exactly. I go over that. And um, she found out through other people about Mel's sleepover. So she, she was actually hurt that she was not, invited to her sleepover because I think she thought that maybe they were getting to a, a better, better place. place. And then I'm sure it didn't mm-hmm. help when she heard that she only wanted to bring to have people that she wanted to start her. Well, new she actually with. addressed that. Remember she addressed that with Mel at Galentine. Right. And Mel agreed that that's what she had said. So Destiny basically feels like there's nothing she can do um, at this point. Um, she can't take ownership for everything. So I I kind of agree with her on that. For her actions. So Tiffany goes to Lewis's gym, the compound, and she says when she came in, Tiffany was looking night, real cute. Yes, yeah, she was. She was. Um, she said when she came in last night, you know, she was full of emotions. Um, she had been on a long trip, and she expected for her man to, you know, ask her how the trip was and find out, you know. What was going on? Want to know something? So she asked him, why you didn't ask me about my trip? And he's like, you know, I just figured, you know, it was exhausting for you. It was draining. And you would tell me when you wanted to tell me, when you wanted to speak about it. But I I, I actually kind of understand, Tiffany. Like, sir, you wanted to go on this trip with me. And you're probably being petty as hell because I took Melody instead of your ass. Now you're feeling some type of way. And now you ain't want to ask me. Um, So she gives him the rundown. She says that they went to. um, The um, the Democrat is the the name. Democrat. Yeah. Um, And that they're going through these at like through the newspaper and she sees all this KKK stuff and then tiny one little corner with MLK. um, And. She says that there was uh, like a child, like a, I guess like a waiting list or something for foster care in the system back in 88. And she went to see if she was maybe on that list. And the guy basically told her that, you know, As racism, we know. racism is relevant now, it was relevant back then. And that was grounds for lynching. Right. So, She's worried about, you know, the people being so secretive and trying to sneak her phone numbers and sneak her emails. And she's concerned because she believes that they fear for their safety by trying to help her. And Lewis basically tells her that um, this is the choice that they made. They know kind of what they're getting themselves into and they're choosing to help you. And basically, you know, help you about that. Mm hmm. And he wants to know uh, more about how the trip was with Mel. And she explains that it was super beneficial to bring Mel along for the trip. Um, And it was more than she expected, especially after speaking with Destiny, calling her a work friend. Mm. And Lewis says that even after, you know, all the things that they've heard about Mel coming from mainly Martel, of course, um, that you know, he really appreciates the type of friend that she is. 
and for her stepping up and being there for her in that moment. So, you know, I don't know. We've always seen Mel be a good friend. So, right. I don't know what happens on when cameras go off. But so Martel meets up with Melnika to discuss his upcoming event. And Melnika is basically giving him the rundown of her marketing, decorating, and food ideas. You know, I ain't get into all of that, but right. basically how the event was going to go. And she says, you know, it needs to be real intimate and sexy because that's who you are. I don't know about. Um, she did ask who he wants or who he plans to invite. And he lets us know that Lewis is on that list along with Chris. Um, Marceau, Maurice, and a couple other names that I don't remember. That's exactly what I know. He said he's very proud of the wine and is happy that Melnika is on his journey with him to help him carry out his vision. Now, she asked him about the two, how the tutoring is going with Danielle. And basically, he basically tries to tell him to continue it. Make sure you got your books. Make sure you're studying, like whatever. Do what you need to do to pass this test. Apparently, Melnika is trying to build a house and would like Marceau to be able to assist her with that project. Martel. What happened? Mm-hmm. Oh, I see Marceau. <laughs> um, but yeah, so she hopes Martel. Sims boy. <laughs> right. Um, she hopes Martel can help her with that, but she need him needs him to have a license first. And we all know he's like, Well, I can get it done. And we're like, No, Martel. She's like, I don't want nobody else's name on it, sir. Just yours. Just right. Just you. So you you get her done. Okay. Exactly. So we get Marceau talking to Tisha. Looks like they stopped by a little coffee shop to have a sit down. And just have a moment to talk about what happened at the tasting. Um, he says that he's really questioning doing any other engagements with her family. Um, he says that um, he didn't like how they were all in his face. And then he also didn't like how T-Man kept questioning him about what's going on with the food truck. And basically tells Tisha that he's not really interested in investing based off of what he saw. So Marceau feels that she needs to really sit down well miss wanda needs to sit down and really separate herself emotionally and think about what's best for her business before they can invest and i was mm-hmm. like that's legit tisha feels like they can help um you know put up for her and get her a better truck then they talk about the beef with kiki marceau says that he wants her to realize that what she does affects others and is affecting him and his family he feels some type of way that she said that Kiki said she could say so many things about him. And then Tisha was like, well, what can she say? What can she say? What can she say? So Tisha says she can she, say anything and you ain't tell your cousin. You need to get popped in your forehead. Right. Tisha says that she feels like Kiki views her as her enemy and she's hurt because she viewed her as a sister. She brings up the fact that... Um, of no Marceau brings up the fact of basically their family getting into their marriage um and Tisha goes to defend him and says well they aren't saying or asking the thing basically they're saying and asking things that they feel I need to say but they feel I'm naive um I don't speak up for myself so they feel like they need to you know do it and he was like well no they don't and she was like well can you do me a favor if I can calm them down on that can you do me a favor and give me more direct answers and stop beating around the bush and stop joking about everything because we all know that's Marceau's favorite thing to do or or deflect Mm -hmm. is the word that I'm looking for now Marceau I was with you most of the episode Marceau but you always know how to turn it around so He then proceeds to tell Tisha that he can do that and give her more direct answers, but he asked her if she can stop coming at him with questions that are disrespectful of his character. Let's provide an example. He does provide an example, and it it was not like the picture, because that's what I thought he was going to say. Oh, okay. There was a time where Miss Wanda told Tisha that 
he special delivered champagne to Melody. And she got upset about it. She grabbed him by the face and wanted to know the answer. And he thought this was just a ridiculous question. Okay. And apparently it's still bothering him because he says, I've never delivered anything special to anyone, especially to Melody. So for you to ask me, it is disrespectful to my character. So by that, that is what he means. I guess. Mel and Kimmy meet up for lunch. To me, right here, Mel looks amazing. I love her hair. With a T at the end, girl. Look, period, dot. Period. <laughs> One dot. <laughs> she was looking super cute. She says she just dropped her song. And Kimmy brings up that Tiffany mentioned that she was helping her to find out who her biological dad was. And Mel says, actually, I volunteered. Right. You know, because she was telling me about it. And I told her, I like this type of stuff. Like, I definitely want to go. I definitely want to help you. And Kimmy says, that's super dope, you know? That goes to show you how good of a friend she is. Because I don't think she would be running around doing that for an acquaintance. Now, Kimmy wants to get in just how dope Mel is. As and brings friend. up the fact that yeah. at Galentine's, after everything went down, she went to the back room. And even though her and Destiny were, you know, having their issues, Mel still came to check up on her. Right. Okay, okay so, <laughs> um, and Kimmy says that really spoke to her, the type of relationship that they had. And she wonders if they can get back to that. Mel, stay quiet. The Mel just time. looked at her. And Kimmy's just like, why are you looking at me like that? I don't like this look. Like, what is going on? And Mel is just like. So Mel explains that she thinks that a lot of people believe just because, you know, you're not kicking it with a person or you don't really rock with them like that. Right. That, that you wish bad. You on. don't hope. You, exactly. You hope you you don't hope well for them. And she said in that moment, it was a lot going on. So she felt like, of course, I'm going to go check on her and make sure that she's good. Kimmy says, well. Says, well, I didn't think you had any ill will, but I thought that that spoke a lot of, you know, character of your friendship. Mel said, no, no, no. <laughs> that spoke character of Mel. Okay. Not our friendship. She says, if she sees anyone, whether she's cool with them or not, um, and they haven't given her a reason to totally, you know, disregard their feelings. She's going to check on them. Right. Melody says that they did speak after the Galentine's event, but the conversation wasn't going, you know, well. And anywhere, yeah. she felt it's like Destiny was more trying to um, uh, defend herself rather than listening. So she said, you know what? Maybe we can pick this conversation up tomorrow. Apparently, Destiny agreed. And she said that she didn't hear from Destiny afterwards. So she just assumed that she was okay. Um, Kimmy says, you know, she moved here and you were a major support system for her. Mel says she has made it very clear that there are things that she likes to go through alone and that is okay. I said, well, if Mel don't got a rebuttal for every goddamn thing, Mel is getting like Kimmy. Right. Okay. Because Kimmy is the one that comes at you with, she got a rebuttal for everything. Everything. And I Mel, think Kimmy a little. I, I will say, um, I feel like Kimmy. And don't get me wrong. I, I, you know, Mel is entitled to feel how she feels. Um, but I feel like Kimmy gives a little bit more grace. She cannot really rock with you, but she'll at least give you the conversation. She'll at least try to give you a chance to redeem yourself. Um, but at the same time, I mean, I think I think Mel. It's working on that. I think she's, this is, this is new to her. Even, you know, these are people that she just fell out with and, you know, she's trying to navigate through that. So right. I think, I mean, she may get there. So the guys meet up for their Atlanta trip and Martel asked the guys, how are you coming on this trip? Because we know after the last shenanigans, the wives may 
feel some type of way. Maurice says, Kimmy said, have fun. I'm going to enjoy my staycation. Right. Lewis says, Tiffany said to have fun and, you know, I love you. Marceau says that Tisha told him to have the best Yolo. time of his life. YOLO. Not if you do something crazy, nigga, you're going to die. Um, Martel says since he's single, the guys can live vicariously through him uh, because he is going to enjoy himself. Uh, Maurice and Marceau joke back and forth about being on their best behavior. And Martel says he's trying to have a whole bunch of linebackers around him on this trip. Okay. Um, I mean, I I didn't know when he actually started liking linebackers, but you know, to each their own. Right. Now, Maurice asked about the itinerary for the trip and Martel says they'll be a little ass looking and smacking. The guys just look like they just got on the wrong bus. Okay. Um, he told the guys that he rented out a mansion and they're going to have a small intimate dinner with a few people that are going to come by to mingle. They're also probably going to hit up a strip club. Marceau says he hopes the guys can keep it classy because they don't want to have any more incidents. And Martel reminds the guys that they're married and tells Lewis, <laughs> no pillow talk, okay? Hmm. Not this time. What happens in Atlanta stays in Atlanta. That is sounding like a recipe for disaster. Okay. Isn't that how they got in trouble last time? Basically. Thank, Thank you, guys. you guys for tuning in to another review of Love and Marriage Huntsville. Please make sure, if you have not already, that you hit that like button. You comment. You subscribe. And hit the notification bell. Yes. And we will catch you next week for the boys' trip to Atlanta. And see who's going to be in trouble and what photos we going to end they up. own all over them with their cameras. Right. Okay. It's going to get interesting. But thank you guys. And we'll catch you next week. Have a great night. Mwah. Front, back, side to side. Make sure you go like and subscribe. Ah, front, back, side to side. Make sure you go like and subscribe. Ah.